Hi everyone, I'm Victoria George Veal and welcome to the first ever Cardiff International Film Festival 2020 online Zoom. So welcome everybody. I am joined here today by the amazing short film category. So first of all, many congratulations guys for making it to the official selection. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much, Victoria. Ah, oh, you're welcome. Welcome, welcome. Congratulations. So, let's begin with, um, you know, talking about some challenges because I know for a fact, you know, with myself as well, this year with the coronavirus pandemic, it has been absolutely crazy. Um, it's been really hard to film. And even if we are allowed to film, obviously we have to socially distance. And in the world of acting and filmmaking, sometimes that's just not possible, is it? So would anyone like to chip in and tell us about their challenges during the filmmaking of their short film, perhaps? Yes. Yeah, uh, we shot this film just before the, the pandemic, uh, started in in india there is a city called calcutta and uh, my film rickshawala is getting screened at the festival and this is my uh, uh, second visit to cardiff with my film last year i had uh, two of my films cakewalk and seasons reading and uh, this year i have uh, rickshawala uh, thankfully we had finished the shoot uh, before the, the covid 19 situation happened and uh, then we went on to the post production but it was very difficult to kind of coordinate on the post-production and uh, you know coordination with my editor and the color correction, the, the subtitle and everything. So it was it was a bit of bit of a, a coordination issue because we had a complete lockdown in India. And as you know that uh, India is suffering a lot. I mean the the number of uh, uh, casualties have increased and the number of patients have increased. So uh, Indian government is very serious about this whole issue. So as a filmmaker, yes, I did face a lot of problem. I had to kind of, you know, uh, push the envelope to meet the deadline of Cardiff International Festival because I really wanted to be a part of Cardiff this year. So it was a bit, a bit of a challenge for me to do that. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm really glad that you overcame those challenges because I, for one, you know, I really do understand how hard it can be, especially when you're making, you know, such a project as well and you want it to be the highest quality. And then, you know, to start maybe shooting. Actually, this is a really interesting topic. Did anyone start shooting maybe before the lockdown or during the lockdown and then realize that they had to stop for a different reason and then they had to start back up or start then stop? Does anyone have any interesting stories to tell the public? Yeah, so we were in a, if it's fine to jump in, we were in a bit of a weird situation in Italy because although we were a British film crew, we shot in Italy just as the pandemic there was really starting to get going. Um, and we remember touching down in Venice airport and there being people in hazmat suits. Obviously that wasn't something we were very used to yet. Yeah. Um, it was over the week that we were there that those first six towns in the uh, Veneto and Florence regions, I think, started to get closed down and that was obviously really scary because we were hearing about it through the British news media which was being very uh, alarmist about what was going on but because our film was actually kind of related to disease it's, it's set during a plague outbreak in Renaissance Florence yeah. um, it helped us got a lot of I mean it, it, it's very very tragic and that's the first thing we've got to talk about um, but I, it, it got a lot of, of interest in the film and there was a sort of slightly surreal thing where one minute we'd be having a meeting about Okay, so what happens if they put roadblocks in, or if we can't go from where we're staying to the shoot location? And the next, we, you know, we ended up on Radio 4, and we ended up talking to the New York Times, because they thought this kind of was a, a human interest story. And I think hopefully it'll really come out in the acting of the film as an opportunity to humanize you know, these similar people going through really, really tough times. Definitely, definitely. And I think, you know, especially in these days, it's just so difficult to get the message across sometimes to people that maybe aren't in our industry that maybe don't present they don't act they don't sing they don't dance they don't model um it's really really we're in the hardest industry i feel and i know the arts have been hit so badly because of this pandemic and uh, would anyone like to say anything about that you know with save the arts movement and things sorry i i didn't get the question um, obviously there's a save the arts movement going on um, and obviously all the theatres are locked down, they're shut down and some of them may never be opening again. Um, and I think a lot of people that aren't in this industry 
still unfortunately don't realize the damage that this lockdown is doing. The pandemic is actually, it's ruining this industry, isn't it? You know, the filmmaking, the music video making, the theaters, West End, musical concerts, live music, um, you know, movie, cinema, it's really affecting everyone. So would anyone like to say, do they have a piece that they'd like to say to the public? I mean, I could say briefly that I guess sometimes it's, it's not uh, valued enough, the creative industries and it's their importance to national economies in the UK and abroad. And it is crucially important that the government understands uh, the centrality of the creative industries and what a contribution they make in terms of revenue. And I think uh, sometimes it's a bit of a struggle for the British government and possibly other governments to understand how important those industries are and how many people are dependent on them, not just behind, you know, not just behind the camera or even in front of the camera, but the, all the industries that go on around that whether it's from, from catering to post-production or everything else. And that it's very important that people do understand how important that is and that it's crucial to sustain those industries and make sure they survive and can thrive after the pandemic. So I think that's something that, that needs to be emphasized because sometimes uh, I think there's a kind of dismissal of creativity in the, in the, in the cultural industries, uh, uh, which misses the fact that a lot of people's livelihoods are dependent on them and that, that they contribute billions to the UK economy and to the global economy every year. Billions, billions. Yeah, thank you also. I'm another point about people and I'm, yeah. I'm in a theatre called the Bush Theatre in Shepherd's Bush and the thing it, we talk about industry but it's really important to highlight the people that make all this work and the freelancers and the support that they need and they've needed and need going forward all the creative freelancers in all of these industries, creative industries and just making sure that their voices are heard through this because there's not a lot of work right now with the theatres shut down. Some theatres are reopening, the bush is reopening, but there's, you know, it's very important that we're highlighting freelancers throughout this conversation. But yeah, just com in complete De agreement. Definitely, definitely freelancers. Who is a freelancer here? Everybody. <laughs> Yes, I think most of us are, aren't we? And I was going to come to Boyana, actually, because I know we have some directors here, we have some producers, um, but we do have an actress. So I'd love to speak to the actress. Hello, Boyana, how are you Hi, doing? Hi, hello. Um, honestly, <laughs> I am a little bit irritated by, because of this whole uh, crazy thing that is happening right now. I'm from Bulgaria. I'm living in Bulgaria. I'm not a freelancer, uh, that's why I kind of stay quiet because yeah. I'm part of a theater company, uh, state theater company here in Sofia, Bulgaria. But uh, we too are very, very um, hit by this because we are trying to uh, continue working on shooting and, and uh, of course, and playing on stage as well. People uh, are scared uh, that is something that is really really uh weird about this whole situation that people are scared going into the saloon and uh you know watching us play um we are playing on a 50 percent uh audience and uh, everybody's struggling i mean i i was supposed to be rehearsing today but someone uh unfortunately got sick so everything got cancelled for unknown how long and it's day by day. It's just day by day. <laughs> you're living in Bulgaria. I was going to ask you, you know, with your accent, which country you're from. That's fantastic, though. You're Bulgarian. Yeah. So yeah. your film, let me get this straight, because there are a lot. You are in social media, which is yeah. directed by Justin Arvantis and Sophia Totu, if I pronounce those names correctly. Yeah. That's fabulous. So um, how was your, uh, your, you know, your filmmaking experience with that? How long did it take you to film? Well, uh, we shot it actually, it was last year at this time. So it was way before the, the virus hit our country. Oh, great. Um, yeah, and it was a very, very fun process. Uh, there were actually interns in a program which is held in New Buyana Film Studios. I have no connection with, with the name. I just have the same name as the studio. <laughs> Weird, I know. <laughs> yeah and it was a great fun experience for me to do I it was the first short movie I ever shot um, I'm, I'm kind of sad that my colleague my co-star uh, wasn't able to participate uh, in, in this interview with me um, and it's a very interesting take on social media okay. uh, hence the yeah. name 
And you know what, it's really appropriate for this time as well, what with the pandemic, because obviously everything has moved, especially in the arts, has moved on to social media. Um, you know, I teach children singing, acting and dancing as another type of profession of mine and all of those uh, lessons are now Zoom lessons, which has been a rather interesting and challenging experience for me myself as well. So, yeah, um, yeah I can't wait to see your film. That's fantastic. Congratulations as well. Thank so you. So we're going to move on to Kate Graham. Hello, Kate. If you just, un yes, there we go. She's unmuted. <laughs> Hi, Kate. Now, which film, which film are you representing today? Oh, I think she's, you're unmuted, but I think you need to get your volume up. I can't hear anything that you're saying. Oh, maybe, maybe your speaker doesn't work. I don't think anyone else can hear either, can they? No, no. Oh. Okay, no problem. I'm going to move on to someone else. Let's go to Daniel Bailey. Hello, Daniel. I don't think Daniel was expecting me to pounce on him like that. No, not like that. It's rather sudden. <laughs> so are you in England right now? I am in sunny England, yes. Oh, it's sunny over there because we're, well, I'm in Wales, obviously I'm in Cardiff, <laughs> and it's been a miserable, rainy Welsh day today. No, it's, it's completely Always rainy here. It's completely the same in London, I'm joking. It's, it's over the <laughs> past and it's been raining, I think, so. Oh no, oh dear. So, Daniel Bailey, now I have my long list of uh, my, my short films here. So which yeah. film are you representing? Just tell the public. Yes, well, I directed um, Paved with Gold, which was written by Jasmine, sorry, Shari and Jasmine Phillips. Mm -hmm. And I also kind of represent um, A Place for You and Me by Lynette Linton, who's also in the chat. Uh, yeah. Me and Lynette have a production company together and it was, those two films were produced as part of a series of, of short monologues. So I've kind of got an interest in both, both films. Fantastic. And when did you realise that you wanted to go into filmmaking? At a young age or was it more recently or have you always been like this? Um, I've always kind of been interested in uh, film and TV. Uh, I did drama in school and studied media at, at college level as well. So I've always sort of maintained an interest in filmmaking and the filmmaking process. Um, and that's just stayed with me till, till now. So it's been probably about 12 years plus that I've kind of been interested in it. Um, my, my film production company, Black Open Entertainment, which I run with Lynette Linton, we've kind of been growing since 2014. So quite intensely for the past six years. Um, I've sort of been interested in film, filmmaking, theatre as well. So, um, yeah, so it's a passion. Do you have a good working relationship with Lynette then? Um, <laughs> this is recorded, yeah. Uh, I was waiting to say something, didn't it? I'll say yes. I'll say yes. <laughs> um, no, I mean, the, the, the process in, in the creative arts is, is enjoyable once you get to the end of it, I guess, but the process isn't um, yes. always plain sailing. So, no. we've, we've had our ups and downs, but Generally, yes, it's been an enjoyable process when you agree, Lynette. Amazing, yeah. fantastic. Well, <laughs> yes. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on to a different kind of topic now. So, is anyone, does anyone have, um, you know, anything exciting coming up? What are you guys looking forward to this year or for the remaining part yeah. of this year? Anyway? Yeah. yeah, we've lost you, Victoria. We've lost Ooh. the host. Ah, uh, no, I'll be back. I'll I'll be just back. Keep Can chatting you anyway. <laughs> Are we back? Yeah, yeah, you're back, you're back. Okay, yeah, you're back. okay great, great, great. It must be the connection in rainy Wales today. So, um, to move on, uh, now, what are you guys looking forward to in the remaining sort of months of this year? Is there anything exciting popping up for you guys, you know, to do with the short film that has been coming to Cardiff Festival? Um, I would love to hear your exciting news. So, what are you guys looking forward to? Um, well, hi, everyone. Hi, gone. <laughs> Hi everybody, pleasure meeting you all and thanks a lot to Cardiff Film Festival for making this happen because my third film I've been selected in a few festivals uh, during the COVID breakout and uh, they just send you an email and say you are being selected and then they send you another email and they say your film was screened this day and to have the opportunity to meet all these other creators is, is, is great. I mean, that's for me, that's the biggest thing whenever you go to a festival is just to meet all the other crazy people that are in this business trying to make the best out of it. So um, what I'm really looking forward is to 
well to be able to go out and shoot again. Like um, the COVID and uh, has been pretty tough for everybody, but at last, at least, I have time for the first time in a couple of years to sit down and write. And uh, that means that I now have three different projects, uh, short films that I would like to shoot. So um, what I'm really looking forward is just to move on and that we can go back to, 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 I don't know, complicate ourselves and our lives with uh, impossible, crazy projects. Yeah. And, uh, and well, a pleasure meeting you always, seriously. <laughs> it's, lovely, it's lovely to meet you all as well. I mean, I think this is the way forward for now anyway. I hope we can all, you know, somehow meet in person one day or, um, you know, attend an actual film festival again, because I interviewed people on the red carpet, the awards ceremony uh, last year for Cardiff Film Festival, and obviously everything was physical and in person, and it was a really wonderful experience. So to do this now this year online, obviously since the summer I've become used to using Zoom, but it's still a very <laughs> odd experience, isn't it? But I think we're all very grateful for actually seeing each other's faces online, because obviously, as you said, it's better than, than nothing, isn't it? Because you just don't, even with this, you feel like there's some sort of connection there with people and we're, we're kind of virtually meeting people. So it's better than nothing. So to wrap up the whole meeting today with my wonderful short film entrance, um, I'm just going to go across the board and you'll have about one minute each just to tell us the name of your short film and a little bit about the film, you know, what's it about, the synopsis, the bio, whichever one you'd like to do really. So you could, this is your chance guys to promote your film to the world and Cardiff in particular. So I'm going to start with um, Boyana because she's in the top left-hand corner of my laptop screen. Okay. So I am Boyana. I'm one of the actors in the social media short film. Social media is a short story about the impact that social media has on our lives. And somehow we are way too invested in it and that we just neglect real life itself. So it's a very abstract and colorful short movie. <laughs> and I'm sure we are all really excited to watch it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to move on to Orsanava. Thanks. Uh, my short is called uh, A Viable Candidate and it basically deals with the scenario, the possible emergence of a, of a, a radi radical black politician in the UK. Uh, who's part of a kind of power couple, along with his wife, um, Mia, and they're invited into a, uh, a meeting with a representative of, of uh, the British intelligence agencies who, who uh, has information about him that might derail his political campaign. So it's quite a contained story, but it deals with some quite pertinent themes, I think. Fantastic, and good luck as well, good luck. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to Gone. Hello, Gon. Hi, Victoria. Hi. My name is Gon Caride, and I'm the writer and director of a short film that is called Two Options. It's a thriller, call it like that, and it's all about misinformation. So um, I guess I'm not going to say much about it, uh, or I will destroy the film. Uh, but uh, well, one thing that is like quite special for me about this film is that um, it was written, shot, and completely post-produced during an international filmmaker's laboratory in France in just five days. So uh, that was... Uh, Sorry, a bit, a bit. You, did you just say you filmed it in five days? Yes, well, everything. Like, you arrive there, you meet a lot of different filmmakers and creative people, and you create your team, and you have to make a film in five days. So um, it's loads of fun, uh, you don't sleep much, and I'm, I'm really proud and really happy of this film, and I, I hope you like it. Oh, I'm sure we will. And do you know what? It's great that you've achieved such a such a great thing, um, you know, in such a short space of time. I think actually we all, as artists, we all work better under a time pressure, don't we? If we know that, oh, we've got six months ahead, we'll be fine. But then if we know we've got five days, boom, you have to focus. And I think we all work under a bit of stress, don't we? We all work very well under stress and pressure. <laughs> okay, lovely. Thank you, Gon. Let's move on to Nicholas Holbert. Hello, Nicholas. Hi. Hi. Yeah, um, I'm Nicholas. Uh, I'm the writer director of The Heptameron. Uh, the Heptameron is a short film about uh, a young woman in Renaissance Italy coming out of an abusive relationship with her husband, and she flees out to this party. 
uh, where everyone's telling stories to distract them from the play outside their window. But will the play come inside and will she be able to kind of square how she feels about this relationship that's just ended? Tune in and find out. I, your trailer was one of the available trailers for me to watch. So I haven't been lucky enough to see everybody's trailers because they weren't available, but I've managed to see your trailer. And Thank you. Uh, I really love the look of the era that it's shot in. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I always love period, period drama. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, no, we managed to shoot uh, on a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Northern Italy. If you ever get a holiday in um, afterwards, I can sorely recommend you go to Villa Gordimel in Verni. It's about an hour and a half north of Venice. Um, yeah, we were really, really lucky to have the cooperation of the guy who lives there, um, and we really wanted to make something that stand out. You know, it has that period character, which is a little uncommon in short films at the moment. It is, it is. So um, you're, you're very unique. Okay, fantastic. Good luck. Let's move on to Lynette Linton. So I don't know if I need to speak to Daniel Bailey because I know you're representing the same project. So um, maybe we can just speak to Lynette if that's, if that's okay. Do you mind if Daniel's got two films? I do mind just because they're two different films. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, sorry. Yeah. That's all right. They're all part of a series. Uh, the films are part of a series. Wow. Um, seven short films about the Windrush, Windrush generation and the scandal. Um, my film is called A Place for You and Me, which I both directed um, and follows um, the impact of the Windrush, Windrush generation and scandal over three generations. Um, wow. And Daniel's film, go down, you. Daniel Bailey. Uh, yes, so my film was written by Shireen Jasmine Phillips, as I mentioned earlier. Um, I directed and produced it. Um, and it's, it's has a similar theme to Lynette's, it's Windrush inspired. Mm -hmm. And it's a warm monologue style um, story. And it kind of puts a highlight on how music and um, it's a style of music called uh, Lovers Rock and how that style of music um, sort of um, born a sort of new generation that, of settlers within the British community. So it kind of talks about how that music um, helped a lot of people survive actually and acted as a form as, of escapism for, for many people settling in Britain. So it, it covers kind of themes of, of that nature. Um, yeah. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it. We will. It sounds really interesting and thank you so much for sharing. Um, I've just realised I've got a remaining amount of time, which is seven minutes, 50 seconds, guys. So I'm going to have to get through everyone rather quickly. So let's go to Shahir Shah. Hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, thank you uh, for this opportunity. Uh, thank you very much. So about my short feeling, uh, this is the new generation, a very good message for the new generation. So this short film is made from uh, United Arab Emirates. I'm from Indian, and we hardly to made this uh, movie. I hope everyone will be uh, like this uh, movie because of this a very beautiful place in the UAE. So thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for this uh, good platform for uh, upcoming uh, <laughs> directors and the projectors. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It's so nice to have such grateful, appreciative people. <laughs> you're also lovely. Let's move on to Kanjan Kishornath. I hope I said that correctly. Hi. Hello. Hello. Uh, now, the pronunciation is quite okay right now. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this is Kanjan uh, from India. So, my short film, uh, it's, uh, the name of the film is The Boy With A Gun. Uh, the original title is Kachi Chinito. It's a uh, tribal language film. Uh, the, uh, the film is about a boy who gets a gun while he's going to the school and how that gun, that gun creates impact on his mind. So it's about, uh, about the impact of terrorism on the child psychology, basically. So uh, the, best, the film is on a tribal language, which I shoot in my own village. And uh, I'm very thankful to the selectors who select my film for your prestigious film festival and hope everybody will like it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. So we have six minutes remaining. So we will do this, guys. We'll get through this. So let's go to Ram Kamal. I forget to tell my uh, movie uh, title. My oh, movie title. title. Sorry, Shahir. Yeah, my movie title is Recognition. I all I forget to. Well, thank you, thank you. So Ram Kamal, hello. We've got five minutes forty-five seconds. So if we can keep this to thirty seconds each, that would be fantastic. He's on mute. You're Ram, on mute. You're Ram. Muted. Ram, you're on mute. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. 
I just wanted to kind of thank Cardiff International Film Festival, the jury members, and everybody out there for selecting this film. This is a, a, a slightly different kind of a cinema. It's called Rikshawala, which means uh, a man who is pulling another man. In, in, in India, uh, this is a kind of banned in 2006 by the Supreme Court. And uh, I am trying to tell the story of these rickshaw pullers, these drivers, who will be eventually jobless. And at the time of recession, at the time of pandemic, what is going to be, what, what is the future that is restored for them? So it is a very human uh, interest story, Rikshawala, mm -hmm. which talks about uh, new generation as well as the old generation. And it is also a tribute to uh, famous Hollywood uh, director, Roland Jobs, film City of Joy, which had uh, Om Puri and Shabana Azmi in it. Yeah. So it is a yeah, it is it is a, it is a, it is a tribute to uh, uh, Roland Joff's film City of Joy. So I am very excited that my film is at uh, the Cardiff International Film Festival, and it is a it is a story that everybody will be able to relate to it. It is in in Bengali and Hindi language, and uh, it is about common people, common man, and uh, I guess that is the the common thread that connects with every human emotion, Victoria. Thank you so Thank much for joining Thank us. So Thank you. We have four minutes. So let's go to Kate Graham. I really hope that the microphone works now. Oh, fingers and can you hear me? Yes. So, okay. uh, sorry for all the technicals. <laughs> uh, so, quickly, so my film's called Scrum. I'm the writer, director, and co-producer on it. Um, it was made with the BFI um, network film funding and it uh, tells the story of a single mum played by Kelly Hollis who's struggling to come to terms with her teenage daughter's love of rugby league. Um, so we made it in Leeds back in sort of it was back in the autumn last year and sort of finished just before all the pandemic stuff started started um, going wrong you know causing problems. Um, it sort of it explores um, it's basically a mother daughter story really um, about and it explores just the mother coming to terms with the fact that her daughter is very different to her and all the kind of expectations she had about I guess you know gender and identity and all those things um, she's just coming to learn to accept them. So yeah, so that's my film. And thank you so much to Cardiff Festival for having oh, it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kate. That's amazing. I'm so sorry if I'm rushing or cutting you off. I'm just looking at the time, the clock. Oh, absolutely, carry on. <laughs> it's 47 and obviously I need to press stop after the record because I don't know if I lose this, if it kind of just shuts down on me. So I need to make sure that I press stop as well. So um, we have two minutes, 35 seconds. Let's go, Lex Slater, hello. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm stepping in for Louis Chan, who wrote and directed Stationery. Um, so it's loosely based. Yeah, I think you spoke to him a minute ago. But anyway, I'll be quick. Um, it's loosely based on, I think, friends that he had um, a few years ago. Um, and it's these two characters who were both drug dealers at school. One of them has sort of reformed his life. The other one's still sort of in that um, world. And the, the, the girl, Gino, who's still, sorry, the girl, Che, who's still dealing drugs, her, her bro younger brother is sort of uh, in the middle of this. So it's like a moral sort of um, question about which way the brother, the younger brother's gonna go, which way his life's gonna go. Um, and it's all set in a car, which is kind of why it's called Station. <laughs> Do you know what? I actually can't wait. I genuinely can't wait to uh, tune in properly to each and every one of your short films. It's going to be really, and they all sound so different as well, you know? Um, so it's really nice to have such versatility in this category. So I wish you all the very best of luck, guys. And it's been a pleasure to talk to you and to meet you from different time zones, different countries. And yes, I wish you all the best of luck. And I hope that you have a wonderful rest of the day. And thank you so much for joining CIF, Cardiff International Film Festival 2020, for this very first virtual festival online. Thank you so much. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you, everybody. And I'm wishing everybody all the best. All the directors, all my fellow directors, all the best. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, guys. Thank Good you, luck. Bye. 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 Bye.